In today's video, we are going to be looking at buttons. Now, buttons can be very simple and easy, and we're going to dive into more medium and maybe even advanced with buttons in this video. But we're going to start with the simplest thing we can possibly do, and it'll only take about a minute. So let's start with that. The first thing we're going to do is just grab a prefab for to act as our button. It's not going to be functional. It's just you can use a square. You can use anything you want. But we're just going to use a button. So we're going to grab it in from the prefab. And it just kind of looks like a um, square. Fancy square. Alright, so here is our button. So what we're going to do, just as for bare minimum, is add the premate toggle, which we will not be using for long. But you just need something simple. This will probably work for you. So once we add, let me get back up here. I was talking about something else while I did that. We're going to remove it. We're going to add a component onto whatever we want. And what we're going to add is interact toggle. All right. So we have our normal text and proximity here. And then we have a drop down list, which will be collapsed. We need to uncollapse it. The little plus button. And that lets us have a list of game objects we wish to toggle. So element zero would be like the first index. So we can toggle more than one thing at a time with this method. And what we're going to do is a very simple use case here, which is for a mirror. So what we want to do is go back to our button and just drag our mirror into element zero. So when we actually go into the run, We go over to our button you can see it is interactable and when we click the button it toggles the mirror now there's some, some important things to know about this real quick is that this will only work locally and what i mean by that is it's not like you clicking this button would turn the mirror on and off for everybody inside the instance and in some cases, it's exactly what you want. It's n nothing more complicated than that. You just want to disable or enable the visibility, not just the visibility, but it actually, you know, being there. It's called if an object's active or not, but essentially this is all you have to do. It takes about a minute and you're done. You can just walk away at this point and you can just keep setting up buttons for different things or have multiple things controlled by one button for each user. So let's say you have like a bunch of decor and if somebody's game's not running well, you can have an option to turn off all decor. Well, you could have all your decor assigned to one button list and then just simply have a toggle like this for the user. This is as far as most worlds take it, but let's say we wanted to do something more complicated. Like maybe we want a button that controls the lighting for everybody so um let's think like maybe like a light show or a spotlight or something i don't know it, it, the use cases are infinite but the point is you want to be able to control clicking a button to fix it for everybody well, there's not really a built-in solution for this and there's also other kind of constraints we might want to put on a button that this does not handle like let's say we are affecting everybody but then somebody joins late we need it to retroactively figure out what it is for everybody else so it's matching theirs we uh, the default toggle does not cover that let's say we want it to a button that only the instance owner can press this does not cover that. So we need to basically get away from this prepackaged toggle and make our own. And what that's gonna involve is two different things or two different ways we can do it. 
One way is through the Udon nodes, which is done through uh, the Udon graph using nodes and noodles or wires, which is very similar to Unreal Engine's blueprint system. Or we can use Udon Sharp, which, which is crazy. That used to be not included in the SDK. That was something completely separate. But that basically lets you use C Sharp to directly write C Sharp code in Visual Studio and attach the scripts into here. And you can do some the same, pretty much the same things you can with that as you can the Udon Graph. But I think it's actually a little bit easier to uh, get good at the Udon Graph. At, uh, sorry, Udon Sharp than it is the Udon Graph. Now the difference is Udon Graph does not really take coding knowledge or experience. Although the logic is handled the exact same, you're not actually writing code, so to speak. And for better or worse, that's just your two options. You can go either route. We are going to be using Udon Sharp to move forward. And if, you, like I said, if you, this is all you wanted to do, just toggle a mirror, you can go ahead and stop at this point. But we're going to be exploring and diving deeper into how to use these buttons a little bit. So I think what we are going to do is have, we can all go ahead and exit play mode. So moving forward, we're going to be making our own. So let's just control D, our current button to clone it or duplicate it. And we're going to remove the rebuilt toggle. And when I was looking at it, it does actually have a master toggle object and a global toggle object, but I think it'd be better to learn how to make our own scripts because these are pretty simple. And then we can do exactly what we want and modify it in any way. So what we need to do is just kind of uh, add another Udon behavior, make sure we're in C sharp, and we're going to hit new program. And then we need to create a script and we can call this uh, whatever the default is we'll append underscore custom at the end it's going to go ahead and compile that for us and we're going to need to be able to edit this script So instead of doing this on a prefab, because I think that was creating some kind of weird error, I'm just going to try it with a cube. I don't know why that would be making a error, but that's okay. We will do it with a cube. So just repeating that first step again. Cube, light, toggle, that's done. Ah, this is what it was supposed to look like. Okay, so we are getting that weird that weirdness uh, because we were trying to do this on a prefab object, which I guess wasn't allowed for some reason. So now that we have our uh, Udon Sharp, we can just double click it. And as long as you have an IDE that can handle C Sharp, whatever that may be, I use Visual Studio. You can use 2022, 2019, doesn't really matter. This is where we actually adjust that code. Now, you don't have to really follow along here. You can just kind of copy what I put down and it should work as intended. Uh, if you want to learn, please do. I comment everything. And if you don't want to do any of the above, you just want whatever I make. I do have all of this on my Patreon, but I don't gatekeep anything. I show you how everything works. You can reverse engineer it. 
and you know extrapolate that knowledge and do whatever you want with it or you can you know follow along and do it exactly as we do or if you just want whatever i made uh, check out my patreon for the download links that is how i kind of keep this channel going as it is not monetized or anything like that now anyways let's get back into it we want to add some pretty simple code here and this is just an example to start with but basically we have our first line is declaring a variable that we are going to edit and then one we are not difference between public and private and then we're going to do a check here just to make sure it ex it's not it exists basically and we are assuming the light is on to begin with, so we would change that if we had it off to begin with. But essentially, we just do a flip-flop and flip it on and off. So this is basically going to recreate uh, the button that we just had. And all I did was hit save and then go back over here and it'll compile it. So we just made essentially uh, kind of the same Thing that was built in but that's a good starting step so what we need to do is have our target light so our spotlight is going to be our target light and then we are going to hit play and now this should work in the same way that our pre-built one works so when we click on our cube turns the light on and off. Now, why would we want to do this if we already have one that works the same way? Well, first of all, it's slightly different. It doesn't take a list of objects, it takes a single object, so it's a little worse in that sense. But from here, we can do other things. So, like we were talking about, maybe we want it to be sync. How would we go about doing that? Well, it's a little bit more code, but again, that's why I'm doing the coding. You can just copy what I put or, you know, um, do it however you want to do it. But this is essentially what it would look like for it to now be synced. We're gonna go ahead and hit save again. And everything is commented, so you can kind of follow along here. I don't think I need to go line by line, explain everything in this. That would take forever, and I think I'd lose a lot of interest throughout the video. But now, essentially, it should be synced. So, let's test that. Make sure we go ahead and save it. Let's do a build and test two clients so we know for both clients by default the light is going to be on and if everything is working as intended when one of the clients clicks the button the light should go off for both clients okay we are in turn it off and go to our other client and we can see that it is off. Now let's turn it on. If we go back to our original client, we can see it's on. So our switch or our button is now synced. Uh, some use cases, maybe there's a door. You want uh, or a blocker, an invisible wall that you want for everybody or not. Like there's, a, you can apply this to whatever you would like. This is, we've just applied it to a light for demo purposes. Okay, so that's how we did that. Now, let's take it a step further, and we're going to uh, maybe have it so you, not everybody can click the button, only the instance owner can, or world owner, however you want to phrase it, can click the button. So let's work on that. First things first, we need to close out of here. Go back into our script, and we need to make a few more additions here. 
So we're going to keep building on and building up, which is kind of why I wanted to start with a simple one and we can just keep building feature and, and functionality into our script until we get to a point where we're done. So now only the instance master can do it with these changes. So let's go back and let's see. I'm not entirely sure this will work um, in our build and test, but we'll give it a shot. I haven't actually tried this off camera or anything. We're just kind of working on the fly here. So essentially what will happen or should happen is my main client should be able to toggle it and the other one shouldn't. But because they're both technically me, I'm not sure how the network will interpret that. So we might have to test this. You might need a friend to kind of test, help you test some of this stuff. But let's go ahead and try regardless, shall we? Alright, it looks like we can still do it. So let's turn it off. Go to our other client. It's off. It's good. Okay. So it looks like both can still click it. I think that is because they are both technically me. I'm both considered, you know, they're both considered the master of the instance. But if you were in with other people, they shouldn't be able to click it while you would be able to. And since I am not testing this with other people at the moment, we're just going to have to assume it works as intended. And I have no reason not to. If any of you test it out and I'm wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments and we'll redo this in another video to make sure it does work. So I was going to keep building out the functionality from here, but I just kind of looked at the recording times. I think this is plenty for a intro to buttons. In the next video, we'll look at how to go beyond toggling, such as changing materials, playing sounds, and or animating the objects themselves, basically just building onto what we already have. And that's it. Now you've got a fully working networked light toggle in your VR chat world with optional owner only control for more advanced setups. If you found this helpful and want to skip the setup, the full prefab is available on my Patreon, ready to drop into your world and customize however you like. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, where we'll build on this even further.